Critic! Critic's excitement and ooh, critic. He's flashy and things like that. Fashion glitter, turning heads and that's really about it. Critic! He's truly, 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 truly a critic. Critic's my name, as we clearly explain. Hey, and we're in this, we're in this. Hey, and we're in this. I don't care, because I'm all those truly's I mentioned before. Critic. Critic's my name. Did you get that part about me saying critic's my name? Critic. Well, in our first cinematic motion picture that we're gonna show to the world, yes, we're gonna use our hologram computers to disguise who we really are. Why? I don't know, but we gotta keep this life-changing technology a secret. And only use it to sing songs and take down other competing bands. Oh, like the Misfits or the Stingers? No, and we'll do it while supporting my 12 foster kids. 12 foster kids? I was very inspired by Brangelina. And if we have time, maybe, just maybe, we'll talk about movies. Well, what are we waiting for? Yeah, slap that pointless music video credit below and let Let's get glittering! Um, cut? Critic, we told you you're not allowed to say cut because you're not directing this. Yes, the chart made that quite clear. I just don't feel like this is what people are going to be looking for with a Nostalgia Critic theatrical release. Yeah, this isn't really what the show is about. Trust me, we worked on the Gem movie. Yes, and if there's anything we've figured out, it's that people want adaptations with 80s music, holograms, and truly outrageous adventures. Are you sure that's not what they just wanted for a Gem movie? I don't understand. Can you phrase your question in the form of a chart? Um... I can't understand him through his accent. Why don't we take a break for all of us to collect our thoughts? Good idea. I'll calculate the probability of me relaxing. Ha! Ah, zero. Does this feel right to you? I don't know. I mean, the chart says... Thank you. I mean, if this is what they think the mass audience wants, we should at least try it. Have you seen the Gem movie? Well, for the sake of this analogy to work, I'll say no. Why don't you watch it first? The original Gem and the Holograms was a slightly dated 80s cartoon. Just, just slightly. It centered around a singer who led a double life using technology from a supercomputer named Synergy to use holograms in her earrings to disguise herself. It was... it was Gem, which is more than I can say for the movie. The film is quickly being regarded as one of the worst adaptations of all time. Not only did viewers freak when they saw that the trailer virtually had nothing to do with the original source material, but so few people saw it that it was pulled from theaters in literally two weeks. Two weeks! That's faster than when we figured out Saddam Hussein might be a bad guy! It was ignored by the masses, panned by the critics, and despised by true fans of the original show. Is it worth all the hatred? Well, spike up your hair and ignore that little voice in your head saying, This is wrong. This is Gem and the Holograms! Uh, we're still here. So you are. Oh, okay, okay, cool. yep, yeah. see you later. Yeah. Okay. Have a nice review. Bye. Grams. You'll notice that this movie was made by BH Productions, known primarily for making horror films. That's so easy, I'm just gonna give you a pass on that joke movie. But you better have tougher material for me later. We open with performer and famed Sharknado star Aubrey Peoples, playing Jerrica, who is making a video about how she became Jim. My little sister Kimber. Now you know how some people go online and overshare every tiny little detail of her life is just an open ebook for everyone to see? Yeah. Tell me more about how your sister shares everything in this two hour video about how you became a star. You know what movie? I'll let this one pass too. In fact, give me the first hit. You can have the first hit. It's okay. Great. Now I have to be relentless on you. She lives with her Aunt Molly Ringwall. No, really, Molly Ringwall is in this. I'll give you two seconds to let out a little cry. Oh. Okay, who has two foster daughters and, according to Jerrica, There's only one missing piece, my dad. Because, like in all bad movies, dead mothers don't mean shit! He would call me his diamond in the rough or his gem. Spell with a J, he specifically said that every time. He's working on a device called Synergy. Yep, that's the supercomputer from the show. Don't blink or you'll confuse which one is which! And by the way, they never do say what he died of, but by looking at his incredibly deteriorating health, you know it just had to be broad shoulderitis. You know, the same that I'm sure took her mother that doesn't exist. I still feel like he's with me. 
Oh, by the way, that's not the title. They're just reminding you that you are watching Gem and the Holograms. You didn't wander into the wrong theater. Now, I know what you're thinking. This many girls under one roof, recipe for disaster, right? Well, if you're thinking that, that's sexist, and you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Yeah, they do non-sexist things like get in arguments about what clothes to wear. It's almost like a 36-year-old man wrote this. I don't want to look like a fashion refugee from 1985. Let's just measure the frustration every pissed off gym fan must be having with, say, a really pissed off gym fan with her hair serving as a mood ring. Oh! Trust me, you can't see a lot of her. But it's okay, because they solve all their problems by humming in harmony. No, really. No matter what the issue is, that always seems to solve everything. Timber, hit a C note. Seriously? Amber? Yeah, seriously, let's go. I know that I messed up and I'm sorry. Come here. Oh Critic, Tamara stabbed me in the eye with a pen. Well, you shouldn't have taken the last Diet Coke. That was my Diet Coke. Mine. 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 Tamara, hit a C note. What are you talking about? Ooh. I'm I'm definitely not following this. Ooh. We should probably get him to a hospital. I may literally have seconds. Ooh. Ooh. That's more like it. Now get your cult clothes on. Ooh. We're having Kool-Aid tonight. So they decide to do a music video just for fun, and for some reason think they're in a found footage movie because they literally film everything they do. Okay, is this film's goal to make every previous generation hate this generation? How do I look? Truly? Truly, truly? Outrageous. They all want Jerrica to sing. No, I, I feel uncomfortable. Come on, Jay. I need you. I think you need her the same way your scrambled eggs need more salt. Kind of, but can live without it. But things suddenly get forcibly serious when it looks like the house is going to be foreclosed on. I guess it looks like Molly Ringwald doesn't make the best money choices. I mean, she's in this film, isn't she? 30 days, that's what they're giving us. I mean, there has to be something that we can do. There is. We can be strong for each other. If there's anything Three Stooges Media has taught me is that entertainment always saves heartfelt buildings. So she decides to film a video, and I'm not even kidding. She does that thing where she films the intro like a million times. I'm gonna play you a song that I wrote, obviously. Ugh. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I need to cut this. Ugh. Oh, she's shy! The movies give you permission to be an egomaniac later because we know deep down you're really shy! And finally, she disguises herself in a wig and low lighting, calling herself Jem. Maybe I'm alone out here and nobody's lit. Christ, am I the only one waiting for a monster to pop up any minute? Maybe I'm the only one my voice is <laughs> eh, that wasn't so scary. <laughs> now that's scary! I'm in the dark, hiding. What if I'm wrong? No, you're not alone. Will you shut up? We're trying to sleep! Jerrica, of course, wants to delete the video, but her sister uploads it and literally goes viral overnight. All the web's been talking about is this video posted by an artist who only goes by Jem. Somebody on acoustic guitar singing about how they're alone? I have never seen this online! Look, every time I refresh it, it just keeps going up. Even the head of a music label called Starlight is wanting to make her a star. Jem, if you're out there, check your inbox. How do they think this works? If I make a video of myself jerking off and then post it online, is someone gonna be like, I want to make you famous. Oh, how they scoffed! But Jerrica is sad that she has a huge money-making opportunity laid out for her. Oh, poor friggin' baby. I think you have the potential to become something so much greater. The version of me that they want doesn't... it doesn't exist. Again, I think that's what most of the fan base has been saying. But her aunt convinces her to talk to the agent, all while this entirely pointless YouTube video plays. <laughs> What is the purpose of this? 
Are they preparing a punchline drum beat when she says she wants to bring her sisters and the agent writes, bye? Oh, wait, I take it back. She doesn't write bye, she writes poo. Sorry, I always mistype driver will pick everyone up in the AM with poo. Why are those two keys always together? Morning. Good morning. So they're picked up by a driver slash bodyguard. My name is Zipper. Ah! And since we got the feeling you didn't hate the movie enough yet, here's Juliette Lewis. Sherika Benton. Or is that someone in a Juliette Lewis mask? No, no, that's her, that's her. She plays Erica, the owner of Starlight Studios, who's supposed to hammer in the message that big artistic corporations are bad. A special thanks to this big artistic corporate film for telling us that. Which reminds me, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, all of that, until further notice, none of it. Ooh, sorry, I just assume that's what happens when you tell a millennial that. Hard as it may seem to believe, this movie has a clothing montage. I know, I so rarely see them too. But if Erica's gonna turn them into the Jonas sisters, she has a lot of work ahead of her. But it's okay, because she has an intern slash son named Rio, <gasps> who's been hired to keep an eye on them. Starlight Mansion, your room is upstairs. This is your room. No, no, what was that slow-mo curtain thing? You're in a mansion and you focus on them being amazed by the curtains? What's the matter with you? Is anyone else so tired they can't even take their shoes off? I'm so yes. tired I can't even try my Ugh. new ones on. Yeah, it's hard having people do your makeup and try dresses on. What are you, 40? But something goes suck in the night as they hear a sound from Jerrica's bag. Synergy? Yeah, thanks for the reminder. I was confusing it with all the other robots I saw in this movie. So that's how it communicates. Through music. The exact opposite of what Nickelback does. It's a map to Luke Skywalker. This sucker has everything! So, okay, screw the band. Her dad has created life. Obviously, they can sell this thing and make more than enough money to save the house. Maybe that's where your dad wants us to take Synergy next. You're right. Or go to the place your eye trash can showed you for a second. Well, this clearly makes no sense. How about another pointless YouTube video to have it make even less sense? Yeah, they still think there's a connection somehow to what's going on in the movie and just random videos found online. Were the makers of this film just like... So they steal Rio's car and brilliantly film it because it'll look so awesome in their court hearing. As we cut to a security camera showing them driving off. Okay, seriously, are you just ashamed that professional cameras filmed your movie? Did you see Blair Witch and we're like, no, oh, we could have half-assed it a lot more. Get this, they go to the location and find another piece of the robot which gives them a clue to the location where the next piece is. So glad Dad spent all his time devising this Easter egg hunt instead of, I don't know, keeping their future financially secure. Hey Frank, look, I invented the smartphone. I'm gonna use it to cut vegetables. My job to keep an eye on you, remember? But Rio finds them, is surprisingly not turning them in. Grand Theft Auto is just girls having fun. But it looks like they might be busted because they're trespassing. Jump. We jump? Come on, you gotta jump sometime. Another phrase people say after watching this movie? Thank god the airtight perfection of a trash bag kept Synergy dry because now he can jam with everybody! We got heart, ooh, me and you. Just wait till my strings are <laughs> Do you think Synergy's proud with this role? Do you think he brings it up at family get togethers? <laughs> So they get ready for their first big concert. Hey, hide Synergy, you don't want to make the money. And it just happens to be at the same place where the next clue is. Kooinky dee doo. First, posture makes perfect. Second, lean your weight on the back of your legs. Smile, but don't make faces. 
Paparazzi are not your friends. Wouldn't you tell them all this a little before they're about to step out into the spotlight? Oh, and by the way, you're not singing. You're actually juggling chihuahuas. Hi! But unfortunately, the power goes off. Spared no expense. But everyone gets out their phones and they just keep the party going because they love it so much. Yay! None of us will have batteries to call our parents for a ride home, but at least we can barely hear what you're singing over everyone! After the show, they locate yet another clue and plug it into Synergy. Jerrica, it's your father. If you're hearing this, I've been murdered. Don't trust your aunt! Doesn't seem to give him any answers, so Jim just spews out some random bullshit. You know, we each have a rhythm inside of us, our heartbeat, and it connects us all. So when the path you're on allows you to hear it for the first time, it's like the whole world suddenly falls into perfect harmony. Uh, follow your heart, listen to your dreams, remember to brush your teeth. I have other daily quote emails. So everyone seems to be in love with Jem's amazingness. At least everyone who was still under contract with Universal at the time. Uh, Jem and I dated for like six weeks, it was pretty serious. I'm totally working it into the title of my next film, Jurassic Statutory. But it looks like there's bad news on the horizon. Jarek, I lost the appeal. We just have till the end of this week. Okay, I have a robot with consciousness. We will be shitting money if I can get it to the right people. Oh, for God's sake! Solo contract? Let me turn you into an icon. Robot! You're really going to sign with a person who is doing everything she can to convince you she is literally the devil. Otherwise, you would leave me no choice but to replace you. It's exciting. Oh, excuse me. Those always pop up. So after signing it her legal name, I'm sure, she clearly goes to tell her sisters about it, right? Nope. She figures let it be a surprise. Surely nothing bad would come of it in the near future. We were just talking about you. Yeah, we know. We heard everything. You signed a bullshit contract that completely screws you over? You really are an internet star! I'm done. They're of course pissed off that she tried to save her house. When of course they all should be pissed off they're not using that damn robot! Okay, dead horse. Nevertheless, she gets dressed up as Lady Haha -Ha and lets these background dancers do God knows what. Can't go back, back to the we got our training by watching monkeys do interpretive dance. If you have a seat right in the middle of the theater, we look amazing. If not, we just look really awkward and confused. But we know you're used to watching that in this movie anyway. If not, call this number. Together we can heal. partakes in all the classic rock star cliches. Throwing stuff off the desk, looking at herself in a cracked mirror, referencing bands better than her to make you think she's somewhat like them. In July 1973, the Everly Brothers self-destructed in front of a sold-out crowd. It happens. Bands break up. But we were supposed to be different. Yeah, that whole one show you girls did together really cemented your staying power. How are you supposed to be different? That's probably the fastest breakup ever recorded in human history! No matter, you're late to your biggest cliché, finding the old house you grew up in and sighing, followed by the cliché that her sister Kimber is there at the exact same time. And her foster sisters. And Rio too! You know, while you're at it, why don't you just bring the dead father back to meet him there too? And how do they solve all this conflict that's come between them in literally one day? How else? <laughs> Yep, this is literally so stupid that even the film calls itself out on it. Okay, that was weird. As well as lazy, contrived, and all around unpleasant. But come on, gang, we still have a mystery to solve! You see, they discover the entire hologram message is in the star earrings that Jem has. <laughs> so they have to break into Starlight Studios to get it. So rather than, oh, just walk in because she's their biggest name and he's son of the owner, they disguise themselves to sneak inside. Did you hear that door slam, Fred? No. <laughs> How about that talking, Fred? No. Not even the trunk closing, Fred? Look, it's Jim and the holograms. I've blocked out all visuals and sounds during this. I hear you, Fred. Well, if you do, you're not doing it right. This leads to yet another YouTube video that in no way connects to anything. I don't get it. I really don't get it. 
Except apparently this one has Rob Scallon? Like that Rob Scallon? What the hell is he doing in this? This is weird. I'm giving him a call. Hello? Scallon, why didn't you ever tell me you were in Jim and the Holograms? Look, uh, remember when I told you I did some movies in the past that I wasn't very proud of? Oh my god, I thought you were just talking about porn. No, it's far worse. It was Jim. Rob, I, I had no idea. It was hard times. And I let people use me in a way that, well, I might never feel clean again. Were you at least safe? Oh yeah, I used protection. I had a lawyer look over the contract. Oh good, you hear so many things going around. Just know that even though I've been through a lot, and you may never look at me the same way again, I'm still the same man I was before. Wait a minute, are you playing your own sad music to manipulate me? Gotta go. So they're afraid the security cameras might spot them, but it's okay, because they put a video of a squirrel jet skiing on. And it actually works! Nolan, Robinson, check this out. It's a squirrel. What are we doing? Not in the film or the story, just what are we doing as a species? What kind of mental illness was going on through the writer's mind? The only way this would be okay is if the writer was like, And then they had to figure out how to get inside, so they used a squirrel! Anyway... But it's okay, because they just walked past the guards with no problem anyway. So this... Entire break-in was all pointless. My daughter would kill me if I if I didn't get an autograph. You know, she says it's the new Let It Go. Really? Yeah, her Wait, words not mine. From Frozen? Yeah. One of the many lies this movie's been telling you. They put the final piece in synergy and... Jericho. Yeah, you sure your dad didn't return to his home planet? When I found out how little time I had left, I knew I needed to leave you something. Not instructions on how to patent the artificial life I created, but rather a scavenger hunt that hopefully you had way too much time on your hands to complete. To try to teach you the lessons that I most wanted to pass on. Lessons on how to find random shit and sort out simple clues. Seriously, an episode Scooby-Doo could have done that! I wish I could be there with you. And in my heart, you'll always be my gem. I love you, Jerrica. <laughs> I love you too, Dad. Oh, and tell your sister she's cool too, I guess. Yeah, kind of screwing Kimber over on all of this, isn't he? This isn't just playing favorites, this is playing together a league of screw you! Thankfully, Kimber wasn't in the room when he completely forgets her existence, and Jim wraps up her quote-unquote confession. I promised you the truth and a confession of who I really am. Yeah, I was shocked this girl rock star was a girl rock star. Wait, what am I supposed to learn? So this two-hour confession that apparently her bandmates were just listening quietly to the whole time gets deleted and is never shown to a solitary soul. Not that I don't wish everything in this film could be erased, but what was the point of all that?! Instead, she goes on stage to pretty much just say the exact same thing except shorter and dress like Data from First Contact. Jem is anybody who has something that they want to express and they need the courage to let themselves be heard. Yes, share that message about being yourself in a film that clearly has nothing to do with Jem. On top of that, Rio discovers his father's will. Yeah, guess he died of that fatal just be dead tosis as Jem's dad. And it turns out he left him the company. So Erica is out. Remove Miss Raymond from the concert immediately. That'll teach you from making us famous, bitch! So, what's the first thing he's gonna do now that the girls have agreed to make decisions together and always be equal? Totally rename the band without consulting them! What would they like to call the band? How about Jim and the Holograms? I figure it matches their flaky, see-through, almost invisible personalities. But after the movie's credits, Erica plots her revenge and goes to a band called the Misfits. You wish. No, this is the rival band that always hated Jim. One of the few things they spontaneously, out of nowhere, wanted to make very similar to the cartoon. Destroy Jem. Our songs are better. We're gonna get her. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and join Azula in Last Airbender 2? I'm sure you'll have plenty of time to talk about things. 
But even then, there's one more thing to talk about. I want to save until the end because it's a pretty big deal. You're probably wondering, outside of giving us an insultingly weak story and characters, explaining how to not be a corporate sellout while being one of the biggest corporate sellouts of all time, and having virtually nothing to do with the show whatsoever, how can they possibly insult the fans even further? Well, you see, the makers of this movie actually offered the fans a chance to be in the movie. All they have to do is film themselves saying how much they love Jem the cartoon. Tell us what you love about Jem. You could even post pictures of you dressed up of her. Whatever it is, we want to see and hear your passion for the original gem. Cute an idea, get the buzz going, maybe play it in the end credits or something. But that's not what they do. They take the footage of the fans saying how much they love the cartoon, and they edit it to look like they're talking about the gem from the movie. A movie nobody had seen by that point and has little to do with the show they love. But now, it looks like they're praising the hell out of it. I struggled with my ideas of beauty. She stands out in a very humble way. Jen inspired me. I just want to say thank you for that. Wow. That is low. Oh, you like the cartoon? You think she's truly outrageous? Well, this is what you were talking about the whole time. Yeah, yeah, this is Jem. This is Jem. You said it. He basically taught me that it's okay to be who you are and not to be afraid. I'm not invisible, that I have a voice. Oh, you felt a strong emotional bond? Well, it's not the cartoon, it's this Jem. This is the Jem you felt a strong emotional bond for. This is like asking people to make videos saying why they love Star Wars and then suddenly editing it to make it look like you're talking about the Phantom Menace. It's not just cruel, it's a slap in the friggin' face. What makes it even funnier is how lazy it is. Not only do they have the text of the cartoon all over their stuff, not only are they dressed up like the cartoon characters and not the movie, but you can see the cartoon playing in the background! Yeah! They just let that in! It's so clear what they're talking about! How amazingly lazy can you get? People, as someone that didn't watch Jim growing up and only kind of saw it once in a while in passing, even I can say, this movie's an insult. It goes out of its way to piss you off in every conceivable fashion. It doesn't work as a standalone film, it doesn't work as an adaptation, the choices make no sense, and it does everything in its power to make sure the fans will hate it. Look, I'm not gonna act like I enjoyed this stupid cartoon. We all had our shows that only existed to sell toys, I had mine, you had yours, and that's fine. But there is a definite audience that grew up with this. And while I know there has to be changes when adapting a show to film, there is absolutely no respect and no love for any of the people that grew up with it. Say what you want about Transformers, but it had Transformers. This has no gem. And they're strangely proud of that. Well, I admit it is kind of funny just what a reckless sellout it is. It does cross a sort of line when it's taking fans of the show and manipulating their footage to represent something that they know they're gonna hate. It not only feels forced and stupid, it just feels wrong. And I can see now why you're trying to make my movie look like Jem the Cartoon. It's a win back all the fans that you lost. Shut your non-studio sanctioned mouth, critic. Yes, we've destroyed much bigger franchises than yours. Oh yeah? Who are you gonna get to replace me? Tam! Tam's excitement. Ooh, Tam! She's flashy and things like that. Fashion glitter! Hey guys, this wig kind of itches. Malk! Malk's excitement. Ooh, Malk! He's flashy and things like that. Did we learn anything at all? I hope not. No one, Robinson, check this out. It's a squirrel. Coming next week, it's the Cat in the Hat versus the Grinch. The Dr. Seuss special everybody forgets about. But you can see it now under Vessel's ad-free early access. Just $3 a month to see tons of people's videos early, as well as a bunch of other extra features. Check it out and get the early scoop. 
Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. This week we are doing direct relief. This is a medical aid organization active in all 50 states and in 70 countries with a mission to improve the health and lives of people affected by poverty or emergency situations. This is the first nonprofit organization in the U.S. to be designated by the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy as a verified accredited wholesale distributor. It's among the largest medical suppliers to West Africa in response to the Ebola epidemic, the Philippines following Typhoon Haiyan, and Haiti after the 2010 quake. It's also earned a 100% fundraising efficiency rating from Forbes, topping Charity Navigator's 2015 list of the top 10 best charities everyone's heard of. And it's named by the Fast Company among the world's most innovative companies for nonprofit. These are people that do wonderful work and share amazing stories if you go to either their site or their YouTube page. Definitely check them out, show your support, and help save the lives of so many people in trouble. The tiniest little bit can go a long way.